A lot of excitement about UFC 202. One of the fights everybody is talking about is Rick Story versus Donald Cerrone. We're just days away, Rick, so let's talk about it for a second. How does it feel like to be back in the spotlight, everybody looking forward to this big fight with Donald Cerrone? Yeah, it's <laughs> just another day. Just another fight. I'm going to go out and do what I do. How did it feel to obviously have that 19-month layoff and then come back and fight Tarek Safadine? Now you've got to fight three months later. Is this the trend for you, and are you sort of looking to make up for lost time? Uh, it's not necessarily looking up for the lost time. I'm just uh, trying to get ahead in life. It's nice to be able to get another paycheck this soon. What's life like for you, getting ahead in life? Is it being at the top of the MMA game, or are you talking about in general there's a few different dimensions to your life? This is just one of them. Oh. Uh, honestly, at the beginning of my career, it's like I made a lot of sacrifices. I invested most of my money into a gym, and then it was a really shitty situation. It was stupid. So when I ended up getting out of that, then I had a lot of debt. So it's like I paid that off, and now I'm finally starting to get ahead, I'm starting to resurface. And, you know, I got goals that I want to achieve, and uh, fighting's going to help me do that now, finally. Take us into some of those goals. What are the goals that you want to achieve? It sounds like they might be financial. It is, yeah. Yeah, it's financial. I want to I want to buy a damn house. It's like I've been working the last three years to rebuild my credit just because I went to shit for the situation I was in. So, it's like, yeah. It's like my credit's finally good again. And, you know, it's like I want to be able to buy a house. I want to be able to, you know, have the opportunity to buy some land and, you know, be rooted somewhere. It sounds like when you first got into MMA and obviously you made a lot of investments, you were hoping that they would sort of get a bit of a, a lot quicker return than you expected. Was it a bit of a surprise that it took you sort of this long to sort of even out? No, I mean, halfway, halfway through like my first investment, I realized, you know, it was like kind of a perpetual thing that was just shoot myself in the foot. But I made a commitment and I gave, I gave a person my word that I would, I would do whatever it needed or I would do whatever I needed to take to like make it successful, but yeah, it's you know I burnt out on that, and I got away from that situation, changed everything around, and you know now I'm looking out for me. A good investment could be in submission ready. You know we're doing big things, Rick. But we'll <laughs> talk about that after the interview and present you with a portfolio and a presentation about that. But let's talk about fighter pay for a second because you mentioned the debt, the issues, the bad investments. What are your thoughts on fire on fighter pay and also? the new association that's hoping to bring a fighters union and an opportunity for fighters to get paid better. Yeah, on that, you know, I kind of kind of keep in on the hush hush with like the union type stuff um, just because I haven't really gotten any advisement on it. I don't necessarily want to get penalized like behind the scenes. Um, and what was the first question? Your thoughts on the pay in general. The pay in general it's like some people are favored, obviously, just because like they bring in a lot more viewership and a lot more fans and stuff. But at the same time, it's like one of my gripes is like they're bringing in like certain people and paying them a lot more. And I've been in the organization since 2009, and I've had a lot of fights. And these people that have only had one or two fights are making more than me. You know that kind of gets old. And you know I've had kind of an up and down career with you know prior to like my move from my first situation but you know there I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm not to blame but at the same time in the situation I'm not the only one that com I'm not even complaining about it because now I'm finally like starting to get paid more but um, it's just people that haven't put the time in and the sacrifice that I've made they're making more than me it is a little frustrating. With the new owners of the UFC, obviously they are from the entertainment industry and they have that kind of background. In that industry, it's, it, unions aren't really a new thing. Do you, are you sort of hoping that because of that, it might lead to a union, it might be a little bit more accepted by the owners? You know, I'm not going to say yay or nay. Uh, I'm just going to reserve my opinion. Um, I need to get advice from my management before I even decide to say yay or nay. Smart move, Rick. Now let's talk about the health. Let's talk about the neck, the reason why you've been out for such a long time. You look great in your last fight, but talk to us about how it's feeling right now. Is it back? 
to 100% or is it one of those things where it's a one fight at a time deal? No, it's 100%. Like, I can lift my head and not get any numbness, so I'm happy. I'm a happy camper. Talk to us about Cowboy Cerrone, the fight ahead. When you look at Cerrone, it's not really a fight that ever seems easy, and even if you do get the win, you're probably going to be going through a war. Do you look forward to these wars? You've had a lot of them in Korea. Does that excite you? Gosh, honestly, it's like he's a good striker, and he's not scared to throw him, so I have a feeling that I'm going to be limping after this fight, regardless if I win or lose. And, you know, I don't look forward to that. The adrenaline in there when we're throwing down, you know, that's that's something to look forward to. But when the adrenaline goes away and then you start feeling all the strikes that landed, you know, that's miserable. But um, all in all, the excitement of getting in there and, you know, biting down your mouthpiece and trading is is pretty exceptional. I can see the excitement on your face just sort of talking about that moment and visualizing it. Just wondering, Cowboy Serrani said that he feels like he's better than you in every area. What do you think about those comments and what do you think you do better than Cowboy Serrani? Yeah, I've said this in a whole bunch, like all the interviews, it's like you keep saying that and now I'll say this again. It's like he, he can tell himself whatever he needs to to step in that cage or octagon, sorry. It's like if he's got to convince himself that I'm some amateur fighter, that's fine. It doesn't bother me one way or another. It's not going to, you know, make me do anything different. I don't have an ego. I know I'm tough. I beat some of the toughest in the division, and I, you know, I keep proving it. So, um, I expect that our fight is going to be really tough. A lot of people overlooking you in this fight, asking Cowboy, what's next? Will you be trying to get Eddie Alvarez? Will you be trying to go here? Will you be trying to go there? No one's really asking what's next for Rick Story if he beats Cowboy Cerrone. So I have to ask you, I have to be one of those people, I have to break the ice in that area. Rick Story wins this fight with De Donald Cerrone, a huge fight on a big, big pay-per-view. What does he want next? Oh, I made that mistake before. I don't look past the next fight. So yeah, that's... That's a mistake that I'm not going to make again. So I don't even have a plan after this fight. So I, hopefully I come out with the win, and then I'll go from there. Before we wrap up, I was reading an interview that you did recently talking about how you've been doing some different kind of training, I believe, in Florida. Uh, and you were saying you want to learn as much as possible because you don't know how much longer you'll be fighting for. You're only 31 years old. Have those thoughts started to enter your mind as, as far as how much longer you'll be fighting for? Well, definitely having neck surgery. I mean, I have two artificial discs in my neck. When your body starts giving out and you have to start getting artificial pieces put in, you know, it's definitely like in the back of my mind. It's not going to deter the fact that it's not going to stop me from training hard. It's not going to stop me from fighting hard. Um, it, it doesn't affect my desire at all to compete. But at the same time, it's like if my neck's giving out. It's like I need to, I need to start thinking else elsewhere like after I'm done fighting I need to start looking out for my future too but um, you know anything could happen you know I could throw my lower back out and then need something with my lower back um, but when I say I don't know how much longer it's like I've always had a goal that I'd be done at 32 but wow that's that's only a year away yeah yeah but you know I don't I don't see that happening because you know, I, I was talking like financially that, you know, I'm trying to get ahead and trying to like get stuff done. So it'll probably take a bit longer than that. And then, you know, the outcome of the Cerrone fight is going to, you know, it would dictate, it'll, it'll like, you know, make the picture a little bit more clear. Do you have a new goal by any chance to say, you know what, I want to be financially stable and I want to be able to live my life and move on by a certain age, 35, 37, anything like that? Uh, I haven't made a specific goal yet. Uh, when I do... You know, I, the reason why I haven't made the specific goal is because when I do, then it'll take over all my thought and it'll detract from my performance in fighting and my training in fighting. So I haven't, I haven't like made that jump just because it's like I'm giving it my all, all my thought, all my focus, just so I can give the best show possible and like. You mentioned good. you'll be in the game for a bit longer because you want to pay off a few things. You want to get yourself in a comfortable place are you still in love with the sport of mma or do you just see that as more of a job to set to get yourself out of this sort of hole and set yourself up for the next path in your career oh no i i love mma uh honestly it's like i love wrestling more uh, wrestling got me in mma and it kept me active and i'm really good at mma 
Um, but really, it's the adrenaline. You know, it's like I'm kind of jealous Donald gets to go out and do all that like crazy shit just because I'm an adrenaline junkie. But at the same time, I I do careless stuff and I probably hurt myself doing it, so I avoid it. Um, uh, yeah, so well, I don't, I'm kind of lost now. All right, Rick. Well, we look forward to seeing UFC 202 and what happens in the fight between you and Donald. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thanks, guys.